supporting Ukraine. And I want to speak now to one country, a representative of one country that has been really vocal in its support uh, for Ukraine, and that is indeed Estonia, because we have Estonia's foreign minister with us now, Margus Sakna, who was just in the UN Security Council meeting uh, watching the speeches there. And, and your country's president just spoke. Can you tell us what his message was to Security Council members? Estonian message is very clear. The Security Council is not working because the aggression is using the veto uh, right, uh, blocking everything. And also it harms a lot uh, the UN Charter. All the basic rules, all the rules what we have agreed as, 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 as a global uh, society. Uh, and uh, it cannot be uh, prolonged in the meaning of, uh, of... We need a reform as well in the Security what Council. What should that reform look like? We must uh, uh, take out from the veto right uh, this kind of uh, decisions as connected to the aggression crimes or the, the crimes against humanity, uh, the war crimes. And also maybe uh, to bring wider the membership of the Security Council. But uh, it cannot work like this. And uh, today it was very important that President Zelensky was participating. He was the first speaker and uh, face to face with the aggressor. And everybody understood what is going on. Uh, but the, the situation is like, like we see it is in the Security Council. But we do know, Minister, that any change to the Security Council would involve all five members voting for it. So how likely do you think any sort of reform would actually be? General Assembly is the place we have to discuss. We have to discuss as well the leadership crimes of aggression because uh, it is obvious what has happened and without Putin's and his Troika decisions uh, uh, that wouldn't be in uh, the full-scale aggression together with the genocide as well as the deportation of uh, Ukraine children. Uh, more than 20,000 children are deported in the 21st century. So this is a wider uh, problem and I think that uh, here in this week we reach as well to the global south and globally more to exp uh, explain what is going on really. You said yourself that the United Nations is essentially a body that is intended to prevent the sort of war of aggression that we've seen from Russia on Ukraine, but that didn't happen. So can the UN really have any power to do anything? Of course, the uh, United Nations is a unique body when all the countries uh, are uh, around the table. But we have to uh, have a guts to talk about the, the problems. And uh, international law is a case law. And we have to uh, take this uh, concrete aggression uh, from the Russian side against Ukraine. And we have to reestablish the, the international law and the basic rules. Because otherwise, uh, we have no the moral or even the legal ground to talk about the authority of what we have as a, as a, as a global society. We're coming to this UN General Assembly just after a G20 meeting in India where we saw the messaging on condemning Russia watered down so that there could be consensus between all G20 members. Are you worried that international attention and support for Ukraine, despite your country's continuing support, that it is fading? It is, of course, uh, very important that we are not getting tired. But also we have to reach to these countries and regions uh, to whom maybe it seems that uh, this, this Russian aggression is some kind of military problem in Europe. It is not. It's a violation of the basic rules. And that's the reason as well we hold yesterday uh, the high-level meeting about uh, the deportation of Ukrainian children. I think that mothers and fathers globally can understand if uh, more than 20,000 uh, children they have deported, uh, they had kidnapped uh, from Ukraine, and we don't know where they are. We don't know what is going on. And this is not only the military conflict. Uh, this is much more wider. One final question for you, Minister. When it comes to aid to Ukraine as a percentage of GDP, Estonia has really been a leading at the very top in supporting Ukraine. We know the U.S. has been leading as well, but right now uh, there, it seems more difficult in the U.S., especially because of Republican opposition among some Republicans, to pass a spending bill to continue to support Ukraine. What is your message to those Republicans in the U.S.? It's not my business to involve the uh, U.S. internal policy, but uh, I think that U.S. and the other countries, we are supporting and we must support Ukraine as long as it takes. It's a long time commitment uh, because Ukrainians are fighting for our values, our freedom, and not only for Ukraine. So I think that we have to think that history is coming back and these are the historical times uh, to protect our values. Minister Saka, thank you so much for joining us on BBC News. And